against the third worst team in this <laughs> team in this league statistically. It would be a wonderful thing for them. So here we go. Picks and bans for the final game of the regular season. Samsung versus Najin. And all right. TF, LeBlanc, Ergot, all banned out. So same bans as the first game so far for Samsung. We'll see if they last ban the Sejuani again. Meanwhile, Urgot, will we see the Hecarim or the Callista? Callista is removed. I think you ban Rek'Sai. Or Cassiopeia. Actually, so Sejuani available right now. And Rek they might have banned the Rek'Sai. Yeah, yeah that's quite idea. smart. So they changed up their bans, even though Ace still playing. So this game have the Cho'Gath and Azir up if Ace wants to play either of those champions. You know, this also, again, you know, leaves that Nidalee pick open for even. He did really well with it in game number two. Yeah, I hope we don't see the Zareth again, because last game you could really see the issue with Zareth. If one of these tanks gets ahead, uh, like Kuve did, and Kuve wasn't even really building that much magic resist. He was pretty yeah. much pure armor and HP. And in that situation, Tank was not able to do anything. He's not able to do damage, which is, in this meta, I just think that Zareth, he's not able to poke so hard with the emphasis on tank stats, poke people out of these team fights. Well, Samsung is going to take that Hecarim. We'll see if it ends up being a Smite Hecarim or a Ignite Hecarim. Meanwhile, and Peanut takes the Nidalee away. Interesting. Duke goes for the Gnar, potentially. Yep, he'll lock that in. And now we get to see if Peanut can play Nidalee. Yeah, this is exciting, huh. actually. Yeah. Uh, but given how talented he is mechanically, I would feel pretty good about putting him on that champion. Yeah, we'll see. How will Eve respond? Will they take the Sejuani this time for Eve? I wonder. I, although for, with Eve, I wouldn't be surprised if he just locks in Lee Sin, huh? It's like, oh, I can't play. He's got to scrap with Peanut in the early game, otherwise it all comes apart, right, though? Yep, that's right. Got to get in there, be aggressive, or pick Nunu. Suppose he can still get in there and be aggressive in a different sort of way. Uh, uh, there's a the Cho'Gath, and they're going to take the Sivir, too. Okay. So good engage yeah. with the Sivir and the Hecarim. And a lot of tankiness, really beefy front line here. That silence, a, a big problem, too, potentially, for Najin. The base can land a good one. So will they go full poke? Again, Najin has the opportunity to take the Zareth and Ezreal here alongside the Nidalee and just all in on a poke composition. Against Hecarim, Cho'Gath may have some issues. Not the Twitch. Don't He's tell no. OQ what to do. He's going to pick no the Twitch. Twitch. Oh, Tristana. Oh, Actually, okay. we have not seen reworked Tristana in Korea yet. This yeah, is the first true. time. Which is kind of surprising. She was very popular before the rework. and. She didn't really lose a lot of her strength in the rework, it seemed like. Well, it just it changed her strength a little bit, and now you have to charge up that explosive shot. But OQ, the kind of player who always was strong on that Tristana and some of these late game hyper carries, so I'm excited to see how he does with this. Let's see. Possibly that Thresh for Tank, I know, or not for Tank, for Kane, wouldn't be a bad choice. This is going to be really fast in pushing turrets in the late game because of the heal on Nidalee and the rapid fire on Tristana, so they're going to be able to carve through towers very, very quickly. You know, I feel like this does set them up for another Zareth pick too, doesn't it? Yeah, possibly. Have possibly that could set them up for a Zareth. We'll see. They do have that last pick to lock in. I want to see the Zillion with the zoning bombs. <laughs> yeah, that's what Everybody has do. bombs. Tristana with the bombs and Zillion with the bombs. Yep. Team bomb. Well, let's see. They could call that gank by bomb. <laughs> Horrible. Truly. Uh, looks like he is considering this new new. You know, with Sivir, it's not bad. Huge front line. Najin, yeah. they're going to be very dependent on OQ's items just to take out the tanks here. Thus put them in a little bit of a vulnerable position. Oh Especially boy. with oh Alistair boy. as well. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, they're going full KT. Here we go. go Alistair on. locked in. Yeah, doubling down right here. He'll be able to dive very effectively. Well, this is going to be really hard for OQ, and especially since he needs time on Tristana to get those items just to be able to bust these tanks. 
What will they do in terms of a mid laner? They know it's going yeah. to be a Cho'Gath. Well, who's someone that can burn through a lot of stuff? Somebody with some percent health <laughs> damage, perhaps? Maybe, maybe you go like a Nivea here and try and uh, play it out that way. Yeah. Wow, Lulu would be really all inning on OQ. Could go Rise. Yeah, Rise would be bad. You you do run the risk of, with his short range, getting silenced for an extended period of time by Cho'Gath, however. Hey, we saw Malzahar win a game. He's ah. got some percent health damage. Yeah, all the tanks come in. Just do that. Oh, do that percent health. Well, Lulu would be really, really, really on. They're putting every single egg into the OQ basket. Well, if you're going to put the eggs into a basket okay. represented by a player on Najin, it might as well be OQ. Wow. Here so we go. OQ is going to have to get some pretty sweet advantages in this game and hope he can make it to three or four items yeah. without all of his lanes losing too terribly. Because if Samsung gets an item advantage on all these tanks, OQ, there is no hope. Well, with a heavy AD carry protect comp like Najin is running, why Tristana over Kogma at this point? Maybe OQ feels more comfortable on that champion. I mean, he's played some really good Kogma games. I can't really answer that. You would yeah, that's what kind of puzzles me. Yeah, you, you think that that may be a better pickup right here, but Tristana is able to deal some damage in lane just because of that charge on her explosive shot these days. So she can burst. If maybe you can pick up a kill that way. I'm not. I'm exactly sure. It's harder to burst somebody down with uh, the Kog'Ma in lane, whereas with the new huh. Tristana, you can really all in and deal. You can deal a lot of damage by rocket jumping onto people now. She can also push Hecarim back, too, which is nice. Yeah, Nar should be able to if he gets Sunfire, though, so we'll yeah. see how Duke decides to itemize, but regardless, very interesting. And a heavy emphasis on Najin's AD carry this game. I feel like Samsung has a lot of ways to win this game, while Najin really only has one. Uh, we'll see if they can use it to take this final game of the regular season. Najin versus Samsung. It's time to get onto Summoner's Rift and find out. Here we go. Samsung Galaxy versus Najin the Empire. The fans are pumped up. So we did go to game three. Kuve just face palming. He's like, oh man. I just realized that I forgot to close the garage door. Oh, OQ. Well, we saw this Nar Hecarim mass matchup earlier tonight, and Marin oh, really boy. did well in lane as Nar against Hecarim. Oh boy. Oh. Don't get too excited, just auto attack, so. <laughs> oh, this is just getting silly. So, anyway, yeah, we did see the Nar Hecarim matchup earlier, and Marin was able to chip that tower really nicely, push in the Hecarim early on, and actually take the turret in the 1v1 for a pretty big advantage. If Smeb hadn't come back and gotten a pretty impressive triple kill at that Baron, it would have been lights out. Yep. So, Kuve. Maybe punished here again by Duke. Duke, one of the best star players we have in this league and consistently able to outperform people in the laning phase. There is Ace with his Jurassic Park Cho'Gath. Jurassic Cho'Gath. Jurassic Cho'Gath. Not I Jurassic that. Park Cho'Gath. Well, That'd be cool too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have a little, few more few more body parts if he was actually resurrected inside Jurassic Park. But yes, I love that skin. Cho'Gath has great skins. Yes, he does. We've had this conversation before. It is. It is quite good. So they will be giving over the ground to Peanut in this game, so no early take. Kuve is in the bottom side. He does have smite, so he is able to deal with his camp right early on and uh, continue to jungle. And these smite top laners in these lane swap situations actually have, of course, that easier time getting some CS in the jungle by themselves. Yep. Meanwhile, Duke does have range, though. We do see an early recall here, actually, coming in from Wraith. So he will be TPing in. And OQ did not get the lane freeze on that side since they were helping out leashing with the Grom. So Kuve should be able to pick up some CS right here. 
Yeah, good start for him. And I'm just really curious to see how Peanuts in Italy is going to work out. You know, will he be able to put any sort of early pressure on or anything like that? Really low from that camp, actually. Yeah. May not have been juggling the before. aggro with the range that well. See the explosive shot. Leveled up right there alongside the rocket jump. So just trying to push, push, push while he can. Wraith right there on the side. However, Kuve was able to take a little bit of that. And looks like he is going to go take up and take the Raptors with his smite. Well, Eve transitions over to the red buff. Peanut low on mana, but will be able to take the red before he backs. I'm curious if Peanut's going to go for the fast tier as well. Yeah, well, if he did, he'd be the first person besides Eve to try that here in Korea. Okay. So he's going to take the Rift Scuttler. How boring. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm just waiting to, for anything to happen, really. All right. Peanut still not going back. He's gaining some mana back from that blue buff. And you know what the heal, I suppose, he can get some health back to. He's going to take the other Rift Scuttler, being very thorough about the scuttling of the Rift Scuttlers. Got to scuttle the scuttlers, make sure they sink right into the river. That's right, and stay there for a while. They get out eventually, but, you know. So, soccer player Alistar, I don't know the actual name of that skin. The green players do love the uh, soccer skins. They do, even though it's a terrible sport. Yeah, talk take, about take boring, Bozzy. <laughs> <laughs> take that, EU fans. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I just made all of Europe angry. Go Packers! <laughs> oh, knock up on the tank. Flashing, he's still in trouble though. Trying to whimsy himself a flash from Ace and first blood goes to Ace. Oh, but he gets taken out by Peanut though. <laughs> yeah, they traded mid laners there. Return kill coming in, but that kill on the Ace. Remember, <laughs> if these tanks get really far ahead of this game, it's yeah. going to be very difficult for Tristana to actually move through them because this is a protect the Tristana composition in effect. So both these guys have decided to become laners for a little while, I guess. That's what happens. They're like, yes, finally, we yeah. actually get access to minions. <laughs> Peanut taking the lane tags there. The sweet, sweet experience. Oh, yes. Kuve, wow, Oku's already done so much damage to that turret, though. Yeah, that's the thing about Man. Tristana. The fast push is very effective. And yep. one thing that Najin does have going for them this game is that if Peanut and Oku get into a lane, uh, now that he's skilled up that rapid fire just a little bit, late game turrets will be lucky to last a wave. They do have that great siege in place. Oh, there's a ward. There's a snowball. There's a rocket jump, and Oku getting away just fine. No trouble. Not really much that Nunu and Hecarim will be able to do. No, not against the Tristana. So the question is, is if Cho'Gath feasts on Lulu, does he really get much out of it? She's kind of small. Not a lot of meat on that champion. It's mostly hat. <laughs> She's got a mouthful of hat. Yeah. You only get half the HP if you feast on a Yordle that you would do otherwise. <laughs> it's a hidden... Hidden, 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 hidden interaction. Hidden nerf. That's why uh, oh. they, That's why they picked three Yordles. Oh know. boy, knock up on the Duke. Duke may have to use his flash. He does, in fact, have to use it. Just getting a little bit too far forward and just getting 2v1 there. That was a bit That was a bit odd. Well, Kane wasn't there to help him out. Guess not. Oh, Juve is bombed. It's the bomb. And no Q, he might just be able to take out this turret right here. And Kuve falling behind in CS despite yeah. of having that smite. This is going to be a dive onto Kuve too, possibly. Nope, yeah. they're turning it around. All right, wanting to go after that dragon, perhaps? Yeah, looks like they are going to transition right into that objective. Wraith not there to help out. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, wow, they're not actually going for it. Looks like they're yeah. going to go for a gank and some deep wards instead. You'd think it'd be a pretty good time for that dragon, wouldn't you? I, I would think that. I would think that indeed. Well, maybe they think that now. No. Nope. Uh, well, Kuve actually had TP, whereas Duke didn't, so that's actually uh, what's causing this to happen. Since everybody was out and returning the lane right now, they didn't want to be jumped. They didn't have deep wards in to know the exact location of Samsung. I suppose. So trying to play it safe. 
and instead we will see the pickaxe and the avarice blade. So Oki looking for that bit of extra money here, but didn't get that BF sword. And so he may not have the most favorable trades against Fury right now. Well, do you think that makes this dragon suddenly a little bit dangerous for Najin? That Oki's damage is going to be a little bit lower? Yeah, it will be lower, and they also just don't have TP, so that's yeah. kind of problematic for them. Ouch. Yeah, this is a very interesting build, actually, because he intentionally didn't buy the BF Sword. He got the gold from killing that tower all to himself. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to split it up with anybody right there, so he... This is very intentional build to be in a power trough now just so he can power spike a little bit harder later on. And part of that, I guess, is going to be giving up this dragon to Samsung. That's basically a choice he made with the itemization. Yep. Naja knows what they're doing, and look at the top lane. Duke is actually uh, about 20 CS up onto Kube right now. Yeah, that we already... That 2v1 working out pretty well. Yeah, and now that they're in the 1v1 as well, we already saw the Hecarim Nar go heavily in favor of the Nar. Oh, yeah. And I think Najin is wise to do this. You know, you don't have the TP, and now they're oh, going to try Kube. and dive onto Kube. Yeah, Kube. Kube doesn't get over the wall, however. He tries to ult away. Here comes Peanut. They uh, get the slow down onto him. There's a nice Glitter Lance, and there's the killing blow. Peanut able to take a kill, and it looks like they'll steal that blue buff from Ace as well. Yeah, Peanut's going to go ahead and take that one, even though he's silenced. There we go. And Najin looking for some pressure in the top side after knowing that that dragon was going down, and Kuve up there all by his lonesome does get found out. Yeah, Najin used that that dragon very, very well. Or used that uh, lack yeah, of taking the dragon. They need that gold right now. That That yeah. is Najin's number one idea, is to get OQ in the space with enough money to get items where he can solo kill all of these tanks. So that's the idea. Just snowball the Tristana right now. So if he can get some, oh boy. if they can get some more towers down up in the top side, especially that will be very useful for them. Well, OQ learned a moment ago that he can't trade straight up with Fury right now. It's not no. going to work. No, it will not. Yep. Got to be a bit closer. And items. Or actually, I have to have items that do damage. <laughs> that helps too. So be a bit behind, but I think they're just going to really punish Kuve. Oh, uh, they see uh, him there hello. actually with yep. that ward. Well, either way, they're going to get more damage done on this turret as Kuve has to back off. So, still a bit of a win for Najin either way. Wow, Eve really going deep here. They're going to just chase him behind the turret. Well, there's no threat. They saw the jungler yeah. and mid laner trying to gank in the top lane, so they actually can proxy farm, get right behind that turret. Uh, but not any longer. They do have to pull back just a hair as Italy will walk in a ward towards the river. But Kuve has an opportunity to get a little bit of free farm right here, and Najin will barely, barely, barely save this turret. Yeah, it's going to just be a couple auto attacks away from death next time. Kube rocking out. He's been losing a little bit of uh, XP and minions to the uh, turret. Uh, he's still not jumping levels, though, which is a, yep. a little bit of Oh, right grab there. onto Wraith. Kane already very low, though. Teleport coming down. Najin wants to fight this. Here we go. Teleport's coming in from both sides. Duke is almost Mega Gnar, though. He's going to jump in. Oh, pretty big Gnar ultimate, actually. There's the absolute zero. Everybody getting out of that now. OQ not able to quite do enough damage. So teleport's used, but no kills on each side just yet. No, they did save the turret, however, so yep. well, at least for now, with the Nunu there, the Blood Boil helping out clear these minion waves and try and secure that objective. Peanut missing a lot of spears this game, actually, not looking entirely comfortable on this Nidalee pickup. No, certainly not the best Nidalee we've seen. And he's not going to be going with that early tier. In fact, we'll be trying to secure that Mage's enchantment. Uh, there goes the turret. Yeah, not thing they can do right now besides take a few minions while the turret goes down to the Blood Boiled Sivir. And they didn't get the turret in the top side either, so Samsung pulling back just a little bit in terms of gold. Although uh, the CS still differential in top lane is still something pretty concerning. And okay, Duke is gone for a pickaxe here. Wow, all right. Interesting. Yeah, it's going for Frozen Mallet? Oh man, wit's end. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Uh, very, very odd. He could be on the Marin school of thoughts, where you go for Mal Malmordius no matter what on top lane Nar. Sounds like a good plan to me. Something weird is happening right now. 
we will wait and see what it is. Well, he's got that lead, so he's got you know a little bit to, uh, to use to play with that lead. We'll see what he decides to do. Ace just feasting on the Raptors. I mean, with a frozen mallet, he would be able to kite Kuve pretty infinitely. True. But it would be the hmm. first time that we've seen that early oh boy. on Anar. We have seen it on Nar before. Marin built it recently, but that was pretty late game with a huge advantage. Think Corky's in that helicopter? No, that helicopter's flying way too high. <laughs> it's way too functional. Even Corky's not that small, too. Yep, it's true. Mini Corky. Frozen Mallet might be an interesting pickup here, considering that they, their team is very kiteable. Well, Duke is going to get dove possibly here, but Najin seems to be well aware of it. Everyone moving up to cut off the paths of escape, and they're going to go in. Duke's going to get dove. I don't think they're going to save him. Yeah, not anywhere close to Meganar. Goodbye, Duke. Okay, well, Ken. Oh, Peanut just <laughs> slow, soloed by Ace, too. Wow. Jeez, that was not good for Najin. Yeah, and Man. meanwhile, Kuve in the mid lane clearing that one out. So Samsung actually moves into a gold lead right there. There was really nothing Peanut could do. Peanut wow. should have stayed mid lane to just huh. help take down the turret to trade objectives. Apparently so. I thought they were going to try to come from behind, but they didn't do that. They do have OQ coming to take out the turret at least, so they're able to even themselves up in that and get that gold lead back again right away. But All right, it yes. is Frozen Mallet. Still looking a bit awkward. Yeah, Frozen Mallet finishing out for Duke. So, yeah, coming in with a dive right here. Duke already down about 50% HP. Not really anything he could do about this one. I want to see what happens in mid. There we go. Okay, River. Ace was just oh, hiding, geez. waiting <laughs> for someone to come back up. And, you know, once he gets hit by that silence, there's really nothing he can do. Yeah, you just become a easy feast. Maybe he's a cat, so that's, well, maybe because he's a cat, it's a fancy feast. <laughs> Chogat's fancy feast on Peanut. I guess so. All right, Najin wants to take this dragon here. Samsung coming in, and they get it. We'll see if Wraith can make a combo here. Ace, okay, they're going to push Wraith back for the moment. Duke coming from the side. He's far away from Meganar. Oh, actually, dragon taken by Eve. Samsung gets it anyway. Duke trying to get into the back. He's almost Meganar now. Wraith still may die. Flashes all the way to the spear. Here we go. Duke gets the ult, so they get a kill out of it. They lose the dragon, though. That's two now in Samsung's favor, but we'll see if maybe Najin can push through this top turret. Get wow. a bunch of wards down at least. Yeah, they have to get something, and OQ yep. still not getting an assist on that one, so neither the oh, kill yeah, nor right. the assist going over to him. In fact, Peanut has all of the kills this game so far, and that's not really who they need those kills to be on. OQ down in CS, too. They're going to send him to top lane. I feel like Duke should kind of maybe let the CS go to his AD carry here. OQ's like, no, wait, I, I need to carry us. Duke's like, I've got frozen mallet, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, so man. Right, they're gonna give they're gonna try and give OQ the gold from this turret, but with oh. Fury being right there, Fury still has his ult too. He'll kill it so fast though. Oh boy, this is so dangerous. Yeah. Not gonna work. Well he'll be able to get a little bit of CS here anyway. This is a very close game right now. Yeah, now Cube is starting to uh, take some of this enemy jungle with that smite too. So even though he's down on CS. Like we've talked about before, the gold total is actually not going to exactly reflect the CS. Right, and it, it's closing the gap just a little bit as well. Yeah. Meanwhile, Peanut and OQ trying desperately to get this turret down in the top side has just a few HP remaining. Yep. Free is still pretty far ahead in CS, and actually, Kube is caught up quite a bit. Only about 20 down now. Uh oh. Uh oh, Najin. Getting a little bit iffy. Yeah, this is the situation they really didn't want to develop. Yeah, while Ace. Ace is getting big. Ace still has no armor though, so that's at least helpful for Najin going for that Abyssal Scepter first, just for the laning phase, and then completing the Morello Nabakon second. However, I'd be surprised if it wasn't going to be Azonia's Hourglass third. And they have a lot of tools to take down OQ. This Hecarim is going to be quite terrifying in the late game with that Skirmisher Saber because he only has to worry about popping it onto OQ, basically. Yeah, now how useful do you think this Frozen Mallet is actually going to be for Duke? Not very. It's certainly looking that way. <laughs> I don't know why he bought it. Wanted to uh, get the style points. He's like, this is my last chance to get MVP. 
I have to style. I pay for it, though. I mean, they do lack gap closers, generally speaking, so maybe he's thinking that he can just kite out the enemy team and he can do really well in a 1v1 with Kuve and just continually auto-harass him and punish him, but yeah, it's suppose. just not very good for team fighting is the thing that is troubling. And so that may actually punish him if he can't get enough advantage in that 1v1. OQ getting some farm, but it still is not as much as Fury is picking up. Fury is still about 20 CS ahead. Looks like they'll finally get this turret, though. Yep, OQ taking that one out. So they do pull ahead in turrets, at least. Yeah, they have a pretty decent gold lead, but even Ace are here to at least get a few hits right there before Tank comes back to clear out yep. the wave as best as he can. Here comes Peanut and Kane. Oh, Peanut failed his leap over the wall there. <laughs> yeah, definitely a newer Nidalee player, I think. I, his Nidalee play has looked uh, very, very rough. Well, OQ has the faster Infinity Edge, however, as we see the later Avarice Blade onto Fury as well as the Brutalizer build. So, But he's going to need Infinity Edge. He's going to need some sort of attack speed item, and he's going to need the Last Whisper uh, come the late game. So you're really looking at three to four items before OQ can probably truly start to carry this. For Although Samsung doesn't have any armor yet, so that is helpful. You know, for this next Dragon Fight that's going to happen, you know, in a about minute 30 or so. Oh, in, I, in, never mind. Infinity Edge just got picked up by Fury. I was going to say how much of a difference that yeah, might make, but now it won't. Seal. So he's going into the static shift oh, yeah. as his next item, and then he'll cap it off probably with, depending on how much armor is picked up, maybe he'll go for a, a Bloodthirster after that, or perhaps he'll switch it up and try and go for that last Whisper. So. OQ should have an edge in these, in this dragon fight, however, given the relative lack of armor here. And at least Duke has, well, I'm not sure about that. Duke's build is pretty bad. Yeah, what do you think he's going for now? Looks like, I don't know, maybe a, maybe a hex drinker? Uh, probably a cowl, I would assume. Close. I against... mean, he's got the cloth armor. He's got the no magic mantle. He needs a ruby crystal for the cowl. Or a longsword for the hex drink. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? I'm really not a fan we've, of this frozen mallet first star that we're seeing right now. We've entered the Duke zone. So who knows? It's going to get built. Dragon up in 30. And uh, we'll see who can push this mid lane a little bit farther in. Looks like for now, Nodgen's going to do it. Oh boy. Duke Meganar, 20 seconds before Dragon. I don't think that's the timing that they wanted on that. It's going to make it tough. And I mean, very few players have been able to time that Nar ultimate, or Mega Nar rather, very well around objectives, and Nodgen's going to have to delay this one if they want it for the fight. But Samsung, I don't think they want to let him wait. Nope. Ace is ready to feast. <laughs> Looking for that great feast angle right now. That's right. Feasting up a storm. Okay. So well, hungry. started up by Samsung right here. Najin still wants to poke in, and Duke trying to find a place to TP. Yeah, Najin wants to try something here. OQ getting a lot of damage onto Wraith, actually. Dragon resetting. Najin was able to force that at least. Duke coming in. Duke. He's going to be Maganar again. And OQ, look at that. Running way in, doing a ton of damage. OQ has really done work here. Oh, but what an engage by Wraith. Here comes Kuve as well. Not bad, Ace on the outside doing quite a bit. Uh, Peanut makes it out here. Two kills already, though, for Eve and OQ out of the fight. This one may not go too well for Najin. Duke able to pick up a kill, though. Ah, it goes down to Wraith, though. <laughs> yep. The headbutt finisher. Meanwhile, head Peanut trying to get some extra HP from the minion wave right there. Will make it out at time. He smited it. Yeah. With the Rangers Trailblazer. A dragon went to Samsung again as well, too. Yeah, this is really not good for Najin. Yeah. And OQ just died instantly in that fight. No peel for him. Kuve finding a great flank. Well, that was just pretty made. Wraith coming from the right side, Kuve coming from the left side. There yeah, was just nothing got, that OQ could do. He got slammed. There was really no way to peel for him, even. Yeah, couldn't even flash there because he died so quickly. Yeah. I don't think that was a matter of appeal. That was just a matter of poor positioning as far as 
where you were and where your enemies ended up. Because if you, if you look, they, I don't know, do they really have too many wards around there? It doesn't look like it. Let's see what, though. I'm sure we'll get a replay where we can check out and see what kind of vision advantage that they have. Yeah, here we go. Uh, uh, yeah, they didn't no. really have the wards, no. And that's what set it all up. Wraith coming in with a great headbutt pulled rise, and then Kube over the top. Oh, and that the rupture. Wild, or the rupture right afterwards. Yeah, great yeah. combo from Samsung on that engage. Jeez. Kube doing a lot of work right there in the back line, and two cable to get a kill. That frozen mouth, and they get smashed into a wall by yeah. Alistair. Kube turned and ran after uh, Peanut. If he would have stuck around, they probably could have done that without Ace getting taken out. Well, still, you have to be really worried because that that Middle East damage is so high, and can continue, she can continue to poke from the outside pretty uninhibited. So yeah. Well, it's an interesting game going on because Najin still does have this gold lead, and still do have a turret lead, but they just haven't been able to control these dragons at all. And Oq still a bit behind. Yeah, he. The problem is you just need to scale so hard on this Tristana, and this is. You know, if you look at the composition, it, it is sort of like a Juggermaw with the the Tristana pickup, but I'm really not a fan of Juggermaw compositions. If this was a Kog'Maw instead, when you have Lulu mid in a tank top, because you just don't have enough damage a lot of the time. You don't have enough threats. If they take out the Tristana, it's all over, yep. essentially. And so I think either you play a more threatening top laner, but usually I just think Lulu top is better. And then you have like a burst mage or another AD carry. You have an Ezreal or a LeBlanc or something like that in the mid lane. Well, I'm still really not sold on this uh, NAR top pick right now. I mean, we've seen people make it work, but it always seems like it works just barely, you know? <laughs> I think with the right, if you have good enough teamwork, I think you can pull it off. But, and if you're good enough at punishing people in lane, I mean, it worked, worked well for SK Telecom. Not true, but. Again. And it was working well earlier in this game. He still has that big CS lead. It's just his itemization is atrocious. It's very bizarre. It feels like he just wanted to carry too hard, you know? I don't know what he's doing. I just don't know, Noah. Well, Trinity Force almost done. That will make OQ's life significantly harder. Is trying to move forward that Trinity Force right now, but as you can see, Eve is going to be going with a Frozen Heart. And once Kuve gets a Frozen Heart too, oh boy. Yeah. Well, it looks like Oku's already building towards that last Whisper, so kind of planning to have the armor penetration when those items appear, but either way, it's still, still going to be tough. Yeah, you still have to deal with the attack speed reduction, though, and he yeah. does not have Berserker Greaves yet, so all he's, he's really relying on his Rapid Shot and the attack speed bonus from the Nidalee heal. Well, dragging up in another two minutes. See if Samsung can get in another position to go ahead and take one right here. It's kind of understandable that Ace's Cho'Gath was banned in game two because he certainly has been doing solid work on it this one. Yeah, it's been looking very good. Decided to uh, go right for that Zonia's. Seems like a safe play. About to finish the Athenes pretty soon, too. He'll probably have that for the next dragon fight if he can get a little bit more CS. Yeah, they should have plenty of time to go ahead and get that. Duke is doing a, trying to steal a little bit of jungle right there. He's trying. I think that's going to be too successful. And there's Trinity Force done for Kuve. Wow. That is quite a nice timing. And man, these smite top junglers, you get in a situation where there's only this one damage threat and you can successfully smite them. It's so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's been amazing, so too. Is, you know, Kuve is down, but again, you know, with the extra gold he's getting off the jungle camps, the CS lead is not anywhere near as much as it looks like. Yeah, and he's also... It's probably about even, honestly. Yeah. Should be... Pretty good, and Kuve in the late game too. You can't really underscore how much of a threat this guy is going to be to the Tristana. Once he gets a bunch of armor and Thormail and smites the Grom. Yeah. I mean, OQ is going to be doing a ludicrous amount of damage to himself in that situation. <laughs> oh boy. But Samsung certainly playing the best we've seen them play all season. Yeah, they really look together tonight.
Yeah. Imagine making some bizarre decisions to help them out. Yep, that does that does help. Better late than never for Samsung, I suppose. Well, Duke finally starting to get tankier right now. Does have that Randuin's Omen completed. All right, a little bit of a standoff in the mid lane as this dragon did just come up. We'll see if Najin can get a good position, but it looks like they're kind of getting pushed back here and separated by the terrain. Oku still doesn't have the last whisper either. Yeah. Well, Najin's got to be pretty careful here. Here comes Tank with the Lich Bane. Yep, Kubei's going back up the top lane to push until he needs to teleport down. And they've got the Rift Skeller, all right, so they've got that Speed Shrine, and Kube, wow. Kube wow, has a lot of wards to TP too. Look how many wards there are around that Yeah, dragon. and they're just going to take mid turret too, it looks like. So they're going to just let Najin have that dragon, why not? And the 6% damage is nice for Najin right now, but it looks like they're going to lose two turrets for it. Maybe not quite this one. Oh, Duke getting completely caught. Goodbye, Duke. They're going to try to make a fight. He did go ahead and get, it, get an ult there. OQ and Kane, not, or OQ and Tank, rather, not getting the best angle since they had that narrow choke to try to fire through. Wow, Duke tried to turn that one around, yeah. but there's just, he died really, really quickly right there. Good pick from Samsung, finding him. They're trying to pursue right now, Kane. Uh, Najin chasing, there's a flash play on the ace. He's gonna flash back into the tri brush. OQ over the wall, there's the Zonius. He's gonna go right into Kube. Kube over the wall with a huge onslaught of shadows. And he's gonna probably get this double kill on Kane unless Eve takes it. Nope, it'll be the double. And now OQ just trying to get a kill onto Eve, and he gets away. Triple kill now for Kube. Can he make it this quadra? He got that smite. That's right. Peanut flashing over the wall. He's gonna go right into Eve though. Peanut might get this kill onto Nunu. Okay. I don't think so. Trying to get out. Smites for oh, hell. Oh, goodbye. Unofficial quadra. Yep. That was uh, really bad for Najin. Wow. Wow, OQ played that so aggressively, too, flashing over the wall to try and clean up some of these kills he and get the resets. Could. But look at this. Duke just gets destroyed right here in that brush, gets an ultimate off, and there's some damage that comes through, but Wraith absorbs most of that with his own ultimate. And then as they're backing away right here, they do get a little bit too aggressive. And Tank and Kane think they can make a play. Start rolling through. Rupture hits OQ right there. Then we see the Whimsy. There's the Flash play, but the hook misses. Then OQ jumps oh no. right up to Kube, knocks him backwards. Oh. But then watch this. He's going to try and clean it up. So he's going to jump over the wall and get a kill on the other side onto Fury. Jump again to try and position onto Eve. But Kube's already cleaned up the rest of that fight. I mean, it was, a, it was a 5v4, so what do you want? Yep. And Hecarim now just goes ahead and completes Frozen Heart. This is really not looking good for Najin at this stage. This Hecarim is way too big. Giving him that four kills is about the worst thing that could have happened for Najin. Seriously. Because he's he can just shut down OQ. This is one of the reasons why this top lane smite is so good right now is because against single damage threat teams it's insanely powerful yeah you just jump in and smite them with the skirmisher saber and you've taken away so much of their damage against uh, your you know, main engage wow kube's actually going to be going for a spirit visage next frankly i think he should just go for thorn mail maybe he's actually just going for block it and just starting with the kindle gem <laughs> Uh, still not great. No. I think he should just straight up go Thornmail right now. What's he really oh. worried about? I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe Spears coming in from Peanut? Yeah, maybe. I can see that. Starting with the Kindle Gem for just a cooldown reduction, though. Yeah. Yeah, the CDR actually is quite helpful. And there's a Baron from Samsung, and Najin not really able to stop this at all. Nice zoning from Wraith. Wraith has had a great game on this Alistar. There we go, another also, headbutt pulverize. Just great wards from Samsung in the last couple of games. Look at how yeah. complete their coverage is. Going for these very upgraded totems once again. And they are easily able to take that Baron, and Samsung looking like are going to roll to their second victory of the season in a surprising upset here. Yeah, their final match of the season, too. And 
You know, it's, it's again, you know, it's too bad because by the time we see these guys again, the meta will probably have shifted again. Too many tank items now for Roku. The only way this goes right is if Najin can hold this until the ultra late game, like six item Tristana ridiculousness. Yeah, I'm sure they'll try. So at what point, if you're Duke, do you just sell that frozen mallet and get a more useful item? I don't think he's going to do that. He's too committed to this frozen mallet now. Shouldn't you reach that point, though? Uh, I mean, it, frozen mallet at least provides a bunch of HP. So if you have some That's armor true. and MR, it's not actually terrible. I suppose that is true. It's just bad in the early game because it's the thing about uh, as Duke will just TP out of there. Uh, the thing about the frozen mallet is uh. it's only really useful in that one v one because if you're if you're in range form in a team fight, you're not doing that much damage. And the only use you can get out of it on NAR is by chasing people or kiting them. And otherwise, Warmogs is just like a million times more efficient. So if you're in a range, if you're in range form in a team fight, you're doing it wrong. And therefore, Frozen Mallet, while technically better in that team, oh god, OQ. Oh, here we go, OQ. Gets it on the lantern. Oh, but there's a flash to pulverize. He picks that one up. Again, Wraith. Coming in and making the plays for the initial engage onto OQ. OQ. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> OQ went a bit ham there, but Ray. You can't do that in this composition. You you are the only source of damage on your team. He wounded that time. Oh, goodbye. A feast of Nidalee. Now this Fancy literally, feast. There's nothing his team can do to stop this push now because nope. he's dead. There's no damage at all. There goes the inhibitor. And they can just they can keep pushing win. here, yeah. They're gonna try, here we go, Baron powered, why not? First Nexus turret getting taken down, Duke's about to leave, Meganar. There he goes, Tank taking some damage, Duke just doing everything he can here. There goes the second Nexus turret, and they're ready to end it. They're just gonna focus this Nexus down, and that is it, Samsung taking the 2-1 victory over Najin Empire to end the regular season, and finally, something for the Samsung players and fans to be happy about. Wow. It's been a rough season, but they go out on top. I mean. That was a good game from them again. They, really was. Uh, they had a good trap. They played out their composition properly, and Samsung really ending this season on a high note. Yeah. Eve with contribution to 12 out of 13 of those kills, and I don't know, Najin, questionable draft, questionable builds. You know, for the first time, Kuve looked good, too. Yep. I mean, he looked downright scary on that Rek'Sai, on that Smite Hecarim. Oh, we saw that Hecarim come out uh, as a ban from Najin in game one. And yeah. we keep saying this, but he's a top 20 player in solo queue in Korea. He is, and finally he was able to bring that carry.